What inspired me to make this course is that as a teacher, I was never really satisfied with anything out there. And then once I started, I thought, why not make it with a video so that people can really learn on their own? And if they want to take lessons, it's good too, but at least they can get a very solid foundation by themselves. It starts from the very beginning. Turn your head to the left slightly, bring your flute to your head, don't bring your head to your flute, be careful with that. I'm going to take you from the very beginning. You don't have to practice always while you're blowing in the beginning because you don't see your fingers and sometimes for beginners it's a bit confusing so it's okay to also just practice moving your fingers by themselves. We're going to take each lesson piece by piece. 16th notes, you have four of them in one quarter note. And they go like this, tiri 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 tiri, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you have four in one beat, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is the way I teach my students, making sure that the foundations are solid so that you can become a good musician. Ah, you can also do it like that, just change the way you support the air. And above all, having the joy to play music. And after that, once you're comfortable with it, you can do it all at, at once, like B, D, B, D, B, G, B, G, G, E, G, E, F, A, F, A, G, B, G, B, A, C, A, C, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, B, at the speed that you can control. I'm Amélie Brodard, and these are your 15 first flute lessons. Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute, live here on Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a place for fans like you to come and support creators like us. So why not join us over on Patreon and help us continue to make great content? The Flute Talk Podcast is also brought to you by the Flute Center of New York. The Flute Center of New York has the world's largest selection of flutes. If you need to buy a flute or piccolo, the Flute Center of New York has you covered. With our code TFC at checkout, you can try up to three to four flutes for up to 10 days, have an extended 18-month warranty, and free shipping worldwide. So be sure to go to the website flutes4sale.com. So that's flutes4sale.com, flutes4sale.com. Just be sure to use that code TFC for all those perks, and a little bit of that does go our way. Another sponsor is, well, ourselves. We have a store. If you haven't noticed yet, we have a store over at store.theflutechannel.com. We have some shirts and posters and things like that over at Teespring. So you can definitely go there and get some merch, posters, whatever you like that we have. It will be there. You probably notice it under our videos. If you're interested, be sure to go to store.theflutechannel.com. That helps us out immensely. So yeah, on with the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Food Talk Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Emily. How's it going, Emily? Very good. How are good. you? Good. All right. Very good. Awesome. Yeah, so we have lots of uh, questions. This is the podcast. We're a uh, monthly podcast that we do live. Uh, and if you want to participate, uh, go on YouTube and check out uh, and subscribe. And you'll get notifications about that. Or you can go on our Patreon, and we usually give notifications there a little bit ahead of time, too. And you can help us support there. Support us there. Uh on Patreon, or you can help us support us here by watching our videos or even leaving a tip during the live chat. That'd be great too. It's much appreciated. So today we're going to talk mainly probably around auditions because we had a question uh, arise in the comments uh, this week about that. So we were sort of talking about that. I think it was about lacking uh, salivation or being dry when they're playing yeah, and having a dry mouth because having of a dry stress. Mouth, yeah. And also, uh, if people want to leave questions, yeah, yeah, leave questions. Uh, this is the live show, of course. You know, leave your questions in the chat if you're live. And we'll try to get to as many as we can. Yeah. So, yeah, someone left a comment on one of our videos mm -hmm. about doing their first edition. They were ready, but then they didn't have enough saliva. Oh, yeah. In their mouth. They had a dry mouth because of stress. And happens a lot to a lot of people, I think. So you, you had some tips, I think. 
Oh yeah, for me it was like I remember uh, whenever I had like a dry spell, it's either or I knew I was gonna be, you know, like I foresaw it that I would probably have a dry mouth or something or the weather or whatever. Or if I was even sick and I had to still audition, I brought like a big jug of water and I drank as much as I could like comfortably before I would go on stage or bring the bottle on stage. Sometimes you're allowed to bring it with you. Um, also, like if you can't and you don't have that luxury or if you forgot and you're having a dry spell, sometimes I lightly like bite the side of my cheek. It sort of simulates sal- uh, sal- stimulates. stimulates salivation. Yeah. Also, uh, the tongue too, just a little, not even a hard, just like, mm, and then. I'm simulating just biting my tongue if you're listening. Um, and that usually starts it off. And then I kind of even forget about it. And then I'm okay usually. Yeah. But like severe dry mouth, I would really... And you have that constant problem. I would say bring water. And also keep hydrated throughout the whole day before your audition too yeah. really does help. Yeah. Those are my tips. Yeah. Sometimes when we're nervous, we feel like going at the bathroom. So maybe we don't want to drink too much. like, But we should still drink because it's just a feeling... Like it's not gonna make us not be able to play well because we're not gonna yes. focus on that while we're playing. So we should still drink. But yeah, personally, I just imagine something I like to eat. Oh yeah. When I'm nervous like that, and if my mouth is dry, I think about ice cream, <laughs> and it works. <laughs> works for me. Yeah, you yeah, know? that's pretty interesting. That can work. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm like those Pavlovian dogs. <laughs> it's like ice cream. I <laughs> salivate. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thinking about things do 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 that <laughs> do do that as well. So that's interesting. Yeah, but also like reducing your level of stress by yeah. um, doing some uh, visualization, yeah. maybe meditation, maybe uh, some breathing exercises, yeah. so uh, that yeah. you can uh, have a lower stress level. Might totally. also be because you can have all the tricks you want. Mm-hmm. Maybe next time it won't be salivation, it will be shaking. Yeah. Or maybe it will be forgetting something. Mm-hmm. Or So I think like doing some breathing exercises, yeah. visualizing the audition ahead of time. Totally. Solid preparation yeah. too. Like actually maybe even practicing, if you have the time, practicing those uh, audition, thi- audition excerpts or what do you want to call them, exercises in front of people or to yourself while recording yourself so you don't stop. And then yeah. you can see what you do and then what things you have to work on to kind of solidify everything and make everything even more stable because that can help build your confidence. You can also uh, visualize yourself getting to the audition day, then yeah. preparing there, then going in the room, then playing your excerpts mm-hmm. and you visualize all the right. steps and you visualize them going well. Mm-hmm. And doing that, let's say, every night before you go to bed, yeah, it can make a huge difference. Visualization is very interesting it's a very interesting technique and so that can work but mm-hmm. also keeping your stress level under control with breathing is a very efficient way to um to bring the heart rate down so if you breathe slower or you hold your breath a little bit your heart rate will go down and then uh, it kind of signals your nervous system that you're not in danger mm-hmm. you don't have to run you don't have to fight yeah. you just it's not a real danger mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So also now we have some questions. Oh, Dirjoy wants us to say hello. Sure. Hello. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> uh, Destiny Fields wants to know, I have auditions, uh, New York Symphony, NS, NYSSMA. I don't know the what the acronym stands for. How should I prepare? It's sort of like the same thing we were just talking about, like practicing in front of people, uh, recording yourself so you can see where do you stop and then kind of mark those things and kind of deduct like, oh, what things am I confident in? I know I'm always going to get it right not necessarily work on those the things you always get right all the time and not Mm -hmm. work on the things that you don't get right yeah you know work on those things on the things that are more of a challenge for you but Mm -hmm. treat like if you're in sports you have a coach and the coach is there pretty much every time you you train but as musicians we have maybe one lesson a week that's the that's the norm generally sometimes not even so you have to learn to be your own coach somehow. And mm-hmm. that's like how, how you talk to yourself, what words you use when you talk to yourself while you're practicing and um, yeah, how you will structure your practice because it's not someone outside, like someone else saying, now mm-hmm. we're going to practice this because that's where you... So you have to be a bit more critical, a bit more outside of yourself in a way. And recording is a good way to do that. Yep. You can kind of 
separate yourself. Yeah. You, you can watch from outside and be more uh, objective and say, oh, this is very good. And it's important also to acknowledge what's going well yeah. because that's going to boost your confidence. Totally. So when I used to do that, I would um, write down what was already nice and even as if I was judging a competition or judging an exam, mm -hmm. I would say what's good, not just the challenges. So treating yourself the same way you would treat someone else or you want sure. want someone else to treat you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we lack, uh, maybe we're not as nice with ourselves. Mm. Yeah, it's okay to still be critical, but like be critical in the way of, in terms of your own personal growth uh, as a musician, you know? Yeah, and be fair too, because yeah. sometimes we're more critical ab ab about ourselves. Yeah. yeah, and you don't necessarily, need, in the terms of recording yourself, like you don't need anything special. Like I remember using, at the beginning of my career, a tape recorder, like literally a, you know, press oh, yeah, record, yeah, tape recorder. To, yeah. So like our phones are completely adequate you know, don't keep it close to you because you'll have distorted sound, yeah. but keep it far away if because you're using it really for your sound, not necessarily the visual. Um, so just uh, you have the device with you already. You don't need to go spending money on stuff and people saying things online. Like you have this device that can do a lot of amazing it's things. It's enough to, to uh, hear your phrasing here, all the technique, mm -hmm. the articulation. It's enough to have a pretty good idea of what you need to work on. 100%. Uh, Dirjoy wants to know, how do you get the airy sound out of your notes when you play? My notes always sound airy. Well, we have a great video on that. And I think somebody in the chat already mentioned that we do. But yeah, you know, like, yeah, you know. So there can be different reasons why it's airy. Sometimes people smile too much. Uh, they have an um, uh, upward embouchure position. That can be a problem. Sometimes the upper lip is too too much in front oh yeah sometimes uh you're not focusing the air right it's like a open v instead of a closed v so you have to focus the air on the right spot on your embouchure plate mm -hmm. sometimes you're focusing too much on the embouchure right. and overworking and moving too much the embouchure where it, it should be more stable and you should use the air speed way mm -hmm. more than than any movement of the lips yeah to achieve some uh different registers yeah. on your flute yeah so it can be different mm -hmm. things but i would explore trying to find your best note looking in the mirror seeing your your embouchure position there and try to keep it pretty stable from mm -hmm. there and use airspeed to change register yeah. but we have a couple of videos about yeah, changing register about or getting rid of the air in your sound yeah. and so you should watch exactly. that exactly and if you're a fan of the podcast i'm sure if you go through the whole entire archive every single episode we have somebody asking this question which is a, a question yeah. that's uh, justifiable for sure so and practicing in front of a mirror is great yeah totally. and also don't worry too much about a little bit of air because that little bit of air there's different types of air there's a psh that's kind of um you know when you have the sounds not nice but mm -hmm. then you, you can have a little bit that's what's make what makes the sound project mm -hmm. and that you won't hear two meters away yeah. from yourself but you're too close to yourself so you hear it so exactly it's uh well like because you yeah. don't want to some people what they do to get rid of the air is that they they cover the embouchure hole too much and they get this very very tiny sound that's very pure but it's way too small and no one will hear you so it's a compromise yeah I would look at it as a, it's really uh, airiness in sound in general, I think, in addition to that is um, it's inaudible. It's completely inaudible in the in the in the crowd in the crowd. It's physics. That airiness doesn't have a lot of energy to travel. So it stays around your head. That's why you hear it. But if you're if you have a microphone in the hall 100 meters away, there's no airiness anymore. It's literally your tone. So that's why when people do the covering the whole thing like that that now has no energy to go to the back of the hall. So that's why you exactly. can't hear them. So it's really, we have to, I always try to think of it now with people when they think of airiness, I think it's actually inaudible. Like if I go. It, it depends it, because if you have more air than sound, then it's a problem. But that's when it's but like, yeah, it's but that's rare. If it's a bit of air in the sound, then it's not a problem. Yeah. Cause that's, I think that's rare because I, I, th I think about wind ensembles, you know, there's nine flutes. I don't hear airiness. At, like they play, you go up to them, you can hear nine airy flutes, but in the hall you hear a flute. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. uh, I always think of that because of the physics level of it. But uh, we overthink it too much when in reality, it's this thing that we can minimize to a certain point. But then we sort of, like you said, 
don't we worry to too much careful. about it. Yeah, and not, not because and not thin the sound like you it's said. It's difficult for me to tell you, like because I didn't hear you. Is it really airiness, right. or is it just um, what's supposed to be in your yeah. sound and that's bugging you? Because maybe you're right. checking for something that you're looking for something that maybe um, doesn't exist really. Yeah, you know? because when you hear flutists, mm -hmm. you hear them from a little bit more afar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember so you don't yeah. hear their. You don't hear that little psh in their sound. Yeah. Even in the master classes, like even 10, 15 feet away, they would, I remember somebody saying, oh, I have airiness in the sound. But then the whole crowd's like, we can't hear the airiness in your sound. Yeah. You know, so I always think it's this headspace. Because we're so, so close. I had a I teacher know, yeah, who was we're super doing close. that. So true. He'd be like, come close to my, my flute as close, like put your ear as close to yeah. my embouchure as, as <laughs> his ear was. As so ear I one. almost put my ear on his ear. Yeah. And then... There was there's an error, yeah. There's and then he's like, okay, open the door, go in the corridor. Right. Yeah. It sounds amazing. Yeah, it yeah. travels so well, yeah. you know? Because it's so the other part of the sound. Think about yeah. Maybe instead of focusing on the air, which is what you don't want, focus on what you want and focus mm -hmm. on projection. Yes. Yeah. Because we have this tendency to focus on the negative, but mm -hmm. maybe fo focus on the positive. And yeah. what do you want? You want projection. Yeah. You want control of, your own, of, of different registers. Yeah. You want to be able to change registers, change dynamics. Focus on that. Yeah. I even heard like James Goway in a class and then him playing in a gigantic auditorium, like mega. Uh, and in front of him, airiness but in the hall Amazing laser sound. sound filling up so he doesn't change anything you know he doesn't have two different things at different places at different times it's really no, just the same thing the all same the time way, yeah. yeah okay so hopefully that helps we d deep dive a little bit in that that's pretty cool uh john stump wants to know or actually we'll go to john in a second but maya chavez wants to know does a dollar bill help a sticky pad would it make it worse yes it's going to make it worse because there's oils on it i saw this question a mile away and i was like oh we need to talk about that fast um don't use that um I would use like non-bleached if you want to non-bleached uh, cigarette paper or something like that, and never like close like put in put in the the paper close and drag, just put in close release, take it out not while it's pushed down if you really need to get rid of that stuff. Uh, with dollar bills, it works maybe for leather pads, but it doesn't work for fish like uh, double bladder pads or any other type of synthetic pads that flutes now have. Um, it can cause problems. So the, there's that's oils. So thin it's th yeah. That it's you can rip it. You can rip easily. it, and like cigarette paper doesn't have as many ridges as, as a sharp micro ridges as a dollar bill does because it's been pressed. It's been it, there's ink. Ink mm -hmm. is abrasive. All those things are abrasive. Even the texture of the dollar bill is abrasive, and it's not absorbent. <laughs> so really uh, reconsider that. There's a Yamaha makes a paper that uh, a cleaning kit. I think it's nine ten bucks at any many music store has it. Uh, or I can easily rent, buy it, or order it for you. And they have sh cigarette, or they have papers. I think some of them are powdered. I wouldn't use the powdered one. I would use the ones that are bland. But cigarette paper is usually the best. You can get that in any depart, any store, unbleached, either white or brown, doesn't matter. Uh, John Stump wants to know: Can you talk about transposing music? Most videos I've seen on YouTube make it really hard. Transposing? Yeah. Okay. We're lucky we don't have to transpose all the time, but yeah, but, but I have seen some of those videos. They are pretty confusing sometimes. Okay, so transposing is quite simple. I don't know your level of, of yeah, knowledge right. and theory, but I'll go from the beginning pretty much. So let's say you have a C major scale. Um, and uh, so in C major, you have no sharps, no flats. And a major scale is just um, an arrangement of tones and semitones. So you have two tones, one semitone, three tones, one semitone, and that's it. And then when you play other scales, you add sharps or flats so that you keep the same sequence of tones and semitones that you have in your C major scale. So if you play, um, let's say C is one, so D is two, E is three, F is four. Let's say you number those, those degrees of your scale. So let's say you play three blind mouse, three blind mice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a three, two, one, three, two, one. So three, two, one is E, D, C in C major. You want to play it in G major, three becomes B, B, A, G. You want to play it in E major, you have sharps in E major. You have F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, D sharp. So you'll do go G sharp, F sharp, E. So that's how you transpose. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So you can number those degrees of the scale yeah, and smart. then just 
put it in another scale mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it so if you want to learn how to transpose i would say uh, maybe choose a very simple melody like that and then um play it in c major play your c major scale then play your g major scale you have a f sharp play it in g major then play your d major scale you have f sharp c sharp yeah and play it in very simple melodies to mm -hmm. begin with uh, that's what i do with my students so that they start understanding why the scales why you know what's the the l then you understand the grammar of music mm -hmm. in a way you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you can start with your minor scales and you can do the same melody in minor and play with that yeah. and so that's how you you should approach it i guess mm -hmm. so if you if you're not familiar with your major scales you you have to learn the order of sharps order of flats how to find them but you yeah. can also find them by ear because it's always the same sequence right. of tones and semitones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rain Ho wants to know, I'm a late starter, I'm 20 now, and have been playing the flute for three years. Uh, my question is, is it still possible for me to become a professional musician, and how can I prepare for that? Of course, yeah. of course you can. Yeah. Then you, I've known people who started in their 30s. Wasn't uh, Peter Lucas Graf or someone yep, like that? Yeah, he started, he started late. pretty late, started and late. he's one of the yeah. most known flutists. Yeah, like he's and there's in, probably countless others that yeah. have been able to, you know, that are not famous and just are able to go and play you know, be in an orchestra or be a, a soloist in their community or be a recording artist, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because what I notice is sometimes, most of the time, people already have the music in them. By learning music, they just discover what they know. They put a word on what they know. Like, let's say tonal music. Everyone kind of knows tonal music because it's everywhere but they don't necessarily know what the tonic the tonic is or mm -hmm. the different scales how to transpose but that's just they kind of know it you're just putting a word on on what you know in a way so if you're already musical mm -hmm. you're just learning what that musicality means like putting words on all those things that you you knew in, in, intuitively i guess mm -hmm. and yeah if you if you have a good teacher and you have good resources you can mm -hmm. totally uh become a professional yeah and there's a lot of tools out there that can help you start from the very beginning you know you should definitely think about considering taking lessons uh with a teacher that you like that can really help you guide you uh and accelerate your your playing and uh, your progress to being a professional um Jolene wants to know any tips uh, for playing without plugs i want to take them out but i miss notes especially g uh, yeah, G is a big one. That's why sometimes offset G helps for people because they really miss that a lot. So, but my thing with plugs is is that it doesn't matter if you have them in or not. They don't necessarily help with sound, make sound better or worse. It's just really a lot of people played with closed hold flutes for a very long time, and some still do. I have two plugs on my flute that I have on my right hand that I use, and one on my uh, G, in fact, too. I think so or no a so it doesn't matter and i think there's even metal ones now that make it look like it's all contoured mm -hmm. so it looks pretty good instead of getting them replaced with like plateaus but uh i don't know that's my opinion about that what if about you, you? Want, if you want to remove them you should remove from the thumb to the pinky yeah so that's actually you yeah. remove the ones that are closer to the thumb first yeah because it's the ones closer to the pinky that are always more difficult like the fourth the the ring finger is usually more difficult for both hands. Um, totally. Then, you know, it's a finger position. Huh. Maybe your hand position, you have to check that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe your flute is not stable enough. Maybe a thumb port would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, there can be a... If your fingers are holding your flute. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. I wouldn't stress too much about that because it doesn't change the sound. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to assess what you, what your goal is, why you want to put energy in it, and mm -hmm. is it the best place to put your energy right now? Right. It's a lot of diminishing returns. What you're going to practice uh, wrong on that G all the time, and it can be find useful, a solution you know, instead. To have those open holes when you do uh, specific uh, extended techniques of. Uh, but perhaps that's pretty long in your journey. Maybe yeah, that's far but from. Maybe you're yeah. not doing that. So, no. yeah. I wouldn't stress too much about it, but yeah. if you want to do it, because maybe if I have to admit, if your fingers are way, you know, if your finger position is not good, and that's yeah. the reason why you can't, you know, like some people, their fingers are, are way flat, too, yeah. too flat and too sure. far on the on yeah. the keys. 
then I would do it because yeah. I think it could train your fingers. Maybe eventually I would put some back. Yeah. But I would still do it just so you train your hand to be in the right position. Yeah, the proper position so you can have the most efficient energy dispersion on, on the yeah. keys because this is more energy. Like I'm doing this with a, a flat and it's like a lot of energy. But when you have it like this, it's way less energy yeah, and taxing on your curved. system. Not too, but I'm just over-exaggerating. Yeah. Just in the just in the middle yeah yeah you're slightly palming a ball slightly we have a video about playing faster and yep. hand position we have two i think yeah, and we do. they're pretty well explained maybe check that but yeah yeah if you remove them go like that but check if it's not something underlying mm -hmm. like a bad hand position or a bad posture or that your fingers are actually holding your flute right your fingers should be you should be holding your flute with just um your fulcrum points like your mouth your index of the left hand yeah and the thumb of the right hand and it should hold by itself yeah you said the side of your index like the where the knuckle the is index. the knuckle yeah. index yeah the, sorry sorry and so then the fingers yeah. can float can float and yeah. are not holding the instrument yeah also just That's like for any yeah. instrument if you yeah. play guitar and you're holding yeah. your, like any instrument it's the same thing yeah and the like fingers yeah. have to be free and the flute tends to rock back a lot so it's a big big problem with the flute so a thumb pour or something does actually keep it more like that floating it's like having a little shelf yeah because it does gravity just is our is our is our evil enemy and it just pulls it back all the time and it does affect a lot of what we do yeah and then maybe that's why your fingers are too yeah. far on the keys exactly um gotcha wants to know i'm starting marching band next year how do you think i can prepare for that i would work on your memory if there's uh, no street music involved if it's you're doing if you're marching by memory uh, practice uh, small tunes like you said and learn them if you get the tunes in advance maybe listen to them non-stop and try to play them back so that your memory is really good so that you can focus on other things like the marching part and like the coordination and all those things and the music should be I always I did marching band for like nine years and that's what really helped was the memory part uh, everything else then became a lot more easier for me at least I yeah, never played tip. in marching band. Oh, okay. So, so there you go. I'm not a good help there. So there you go. So hopefully that helps you. Work on your memory. Memory is really uh, I guess rhythm help. too because everyone's moving in the Yeah, well, in that's, sequence, that, that's what I mean. Like that that's something that you practice as a group and then you so can... So you'll learn it there. Yeah, and then you learn your peripheral vision. Peripheral vision was a big thing too to kind of look on your lines so that lines are straight and then you always go on your, you know, you're always on the right. You always have to know that, you know, one, two, three, four, left is always one, right, two, the, you like know, you stuff said, like that. You learn it by doing it, and yeah. there's a lot of rehearsals, oh, so, so many, you're gonna yeah. learn yeah. things by yeah. heart just by being there. Yeah, but usually in marching band, from what I realize, is that uh, the music had to be memorized before you even got on, t oh, got yeah? in. Yeah, oh, like wow. so that it's kind of ready to go, and then you worry about like because they usually have routines, so, so you learn they the do choreography and if there is stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, what else we got here? We'll do a couple more questions. Great questions so far. Thanks everybody so much. Um. Surian, Isaac. Hey, Surian. It's been a while. That's cool. It's nice to see you. How do I get my right hand posture on? How do I get my right hand posture on the flute? My hands are relatively large. I can reach a thirteenth on the piano, so my hand is curved to to the right. I've tried to move the foot joint further back. Oh. Well, I've seen. Yeah. I've like Robert Aiken's a very tall man, and he can do like twelve. Like he has huge hands, if I recall. He was yeah. Yeah. Like. And he's able to do that without modifying the flute too I much. I remember his flute pretty well. Like personally, I don't think the size of your hand, as much as the ratio between your pinky and the rest of your fingers, what a is, good is an indicator there. Because mm -hmm. um, if you push your pinky too far back, then your whole hand is going to go more forward, you know? And then everything's going to go too far anyways mm -hmm. so it's more the ratio if your pinky is lower than than the knuckle of your fourth of your um, ring finger then you should bring it closer and if it's higher than that knuckle you should bring it further mm -hmm. but it should be like more about how your hand is with itself because then if you push everything and then you're going too far you're not uh, gonna be better off then I think it mostly is about where you put your thumb. That's going to mm -hmm. affect the um, balance of your hand. So it's probably, yeah, finding the sweet spot for your for your um, foot joint, but then also 
in relation with your thumb. So the thumb, I think, should be in the back of the flute pushing forward. That's the most normal nat mm -hmm. way to play, like the most used. Um, if not, you can use um, the thumb port again. Maybe that could be helpful. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should be a problem that you have big hands. It's all about relationship, you know, right. and not pushing your sh your um, mm -hmm. your um, my God elbow elbows up. Oh yeah, be careful with that. Totally. Yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, Montserrat wants to know: It's pretty normal to get lightheaded. Is it normal to get? Uh, is it normal to get lightheaded? Um, wait a second. Oh my goodness, I was messing that up. What's going on here? It's pretty normal to get. Uh, somebody was asking about: Is it normal to get lightheaded? In the beginning, well, in I the would beginning. say yes. Yeah. Um, because you ov people breathe too much, they breathe too often, mm -hmm. and then they hyperventilate. Maybe practice sitting oh, yeah, down yeah, so yeah, you don't fall. Mm -hmm. But then just notice that you're hyperventilating, so you're probably just breathing in too much. So breathe in a bigger amount of air and then blow for longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Sammy wants to know. I was recently in a solo contest, and one of my judges commented. Uh, one of my judges' comments was to blow into the embouchure hole, hole, not across. What does this mean? It's that you're probably sending the air too high, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe, uh, maybe you're visualizing, let's say, your high register above your head, and then you're sending the air outside of your of your flute. So, try to visualize all the registers under you not higher than your shoulders. So I visualize the lower register at my, let's say, on the floor mm -hmm. and then a bit higher for the middle and yeah. then at my shoulder level, the high register. So I'm always sending the air inside the flute and not... Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just your sun is not focused enough and you have to figure out like that sweet spot yeah. and not blow outside of the flute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, too much. Can, you know? too much. There's yeah. going to be air going across. Yeah. Ob obviously, uh, not all the air goes inside. Right. But if you're aiming there, yeah. above yourself, above your it's or too much across, mm -hmm. it's a bit, it's a bit diagonal down. Yeah. How the air should go. Mm. Uh, this is sort of a double question. Selena wants to know. Yeah. Um, Selena wants to know how uh, to make this. How do you make the sound project? Like make the sound fill a room more. Do you have to play loud to project? Uh, no, you can play soft and project. It's mm -hmm. about uh, embouchure position mm -hmm. and um, support. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Okay. Because you can have a very, you can have a piano sound that projects very well. Mm -hmm. And it's about the color of the sound too. Right. Okay. Sometimes I think, more than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you just have to go for a second yeah. and I will answer a couple more questions and Emily will be right back. But uh, yeah, I would say the same thing. Like, do you have to play loud um, to project more? I would say um, to the effect of like faster air, not m louder air, because again, back to physics, it's just kind of blow. Like if you blow faster air, that air is moving faster. So it's going to those places more and, you know, it can. Uh, that's why if you can play very pianissimo, but you can hear it in the back of the room, it's because and it's because you're using faster air, but not necessarily more air. And if you go up to that person, they're playing playing pretty softly still, but you can hear that the air is really moving quick, like really going to this. You know, it's going intensely. So yeah, hopefully that helps your uh, uh, question. Um, I need how I we got here. I really oh, and then you said I think any advice for flutists learning themselves uh, and our videos help. Thanks, we're glad that you, the videos help so much. Um, learning yourself nowadays is actually pretty amazing. There's a lot of information out there. There's also a lot of information out on the internet, and there's a lot of information available uh, at bookstores and libraries. Like if you go to your big library, your biggest library in your town, you mostly have a music section and. In that music section, there's a lot of flute books that you can rent, you can borrow. You can also go and check out our stuff. Like Emily has a great beginner course, which actually the first 15 lessons are uh, pretty amazing. That really sets you off to get into the intermediate level of playing flute and get pretty comfortable and confident. And that's at musicg.com. That's an amazing resource. But um, listen to other flutists. Listen to other instrumentalists. Also, play the music. If you're learning by yourself and you don't necessarily want to do... Uh, what most people do in, in professional settings or in academic settings is go and do, um, 
you know, uh, those uh, tests like the RCM in Canada, the uh, British version of it, the American version. Um, then play pop, play music that you like, play music, you know, research about it, find this, find music that you think you, that you would like, or you know, you like, and that actually helps because you already know it in your ear because you've heard it and it can help mm-hmm. you learn easier too. Learning by, by, uh, by yourself. Oh yeah. yeah I think our method yourself. is pretty good. Yeah. For our that method's pretty great. Because that's how we, that's how we, um, uh, conceived it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So and that like, it can be used by a teacher. Yeah. But it can be used on your own because everything's on the video. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to work on the, on the follow-up. And even so, yeah. if you have basics, you should go back to the beginning. Yeah. Just make sure, because you learn on your own, just watch everything to make sure, oh, I didn't know that thing. Exactly. And then it might just yeah. jumpstart you and exactly. uh, make make you uh, play with more ease. Yeah, and we really consolidated this uh, this book for the past five years above also our like almost 50 years worth of like experience together but for the past five years with you guys on the channel we've been able to really figure out what people are looking for and struggle with and these are really like the first 15 steps first 15 lessons for people to kind of really get ahead and be comfortable and then you can you know do a lot with that as well and Um, uh but yeah yeah and like some people take a lesson every week and um, yeah lessons can really help I think like maybe you don't want to invest for a lesson every no. week, but you can have uh, two, three lessons a year or a lesson yeah. every season. You have yeah, exactly. four lessons a year or maybe you have two lessons in one month. So, you, yeah. you know, the teacher can say, work on this, you work right. on it. And yeah. the next month you have another one. Yeah. And then maybe you work on those things yeah. for a few months and yeah. you come back with a question. Yeah. If, you come, if you come to a lesson with a specific question, I want to work on this. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need two lessons to improve that yeah. thing and then right. go back to... Uh, exactly. You know? And the method that we're doing is also set to make sure that you have technique and sound yeah. exercises. So everything's in one spot. It's right. not like when you have a teacher, they're going to say, take, do this sound exercise, mm-hmm. do this technical thing, do this scale. Like right. everything's there. You just yeah follow it, you know? Yeah. And just, uh, I would also just like encourage just not to worry too much about what the norm is because we always get overwhelmed like people get lessons once a week for a whole six months and all this stuff like really just follow what you are available to do uh, financially and also uh, mentally how you want to do that stuff there's no race so you know there's a lot of teachers I know us included we are very very flexible with the scheduling so and we don't tend to stress people out about that so that's a very interesting thing the options are so uh, available now and like i said you can go to musogy m-o-u-m-u-s-o-g-y dot com and that's where our all of our digital uh, and uh, physical books for learning the flute are uh and then we'll do one or two more questions i think yeah let's try so hopefully that answered your question um i i saw a really good one Oh, yeah, I really want to play the flute, but I don't want to invest in a beginner flute and reinvest later for intermediate flute. Which flute can you recommend? We have a couple videos. If you go on the Flute Center of New York playlist for us uh, on our channel, you can see there's one or two flutes that we really kind of uh, recommend, and that's like the Trevor James one that's pretty good, and that's like the ultimate intermediate flute, like if you want to stick with it forever. That's a nice one. And then, like, if you want to have a Yamaha, you know, Yamaha 200 or 300 series can last you a long time. 200 is, uh, is more beginner. But it can still do, do stuff. Like, it's... Yeah. I encourage I that one because... I have a student who bought a four or 500 series. Oh, it's, that's quite... Yeah. It's uh, it's intermediate. Like, it's, it's not in the professional yeah. range yet. But and it's still quite she, expensive, though. Yeah. But yeah. she bought it forever. Like, she said, right. that's her flute now. Yeah, that's the forever flute. She you had, can have a forever she flute. She had a beginner flute, mm-hmm. and then she outgrew it, yeah. and then she took that. Yeah. And I have to admit, like, it sounds... Yeah. It's good enough that I think I could play concerts on that flute. Sure. And There's yeah. Sonari has good flutes, Sonari has too. some, too. You can check the Flute Center in New York for that, and you can use our code TFC, and you can have them send you flutes to try up to three or four. So you can call them or go to flutes, the number f- four sale.com and talk to them. They They're have, all flutists there. They have new and used. And sometimes if yeah. you take used, 
You can these go are quite for expensive a though, level. but these are quite expensive. Yeah? I've, yeah, they don't have any used lower level. Okay. So it's really used. Because I used, knew a girl uh, who bought a lot of used flutes there, and she didn't pay that much. But maybe yeah, I'm wrong. That's also a while ago too. Like yeah. The market also different. fluctuates a lot. Ten years. But uh, the cool thing with yeah. with that is that you can. Um, check your budget yep. and check what they have yep. and in that budget range see yep. like have four come yeah. to your house yeah. try them and then yeah. you see what's what's best for you because yeah. it's a personal thing yeah and also go with true name brands like yamaha muramatsu trevor james any of those types of name brands because they all have standardized parts that most repair shops will have. Yeah. If you buy cheap Chinese, you'll never get it repaired. It's it, They don't usually use the same uh, measurements. Well, they it's don't very... have intermediate flutes, those companies. Oh, uh, you'd be surprised. There's, I've seen some YouTube reviews of people with the wooden flutes, like wood flutes, like really good wood concert okay. flutes for two, three $3,000. Never heard of that brand before. It's really a Chinese-made flute. A lot of non-standardized parts in it. Okay. Um, so then so it's, you can uh, have a yeah. Yeah, you can have a big problem with that. It's so like having an imported car. Right, imported. an imported car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to pay. Yeah, you bring a. Yeah, exactly. And find then, the pieces. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah it's impossible. So yeah, yeah so try yeah, that. if you use uh, our code TFC, it gives you some perks and it helps us out. And people oh, have been yeah. using it. And thanks, you, thanks to everyone who used it. Oh yeah, especially during the holidays, it really helped us out to build out uh we're gonna have uh, new things coming out soon because of uh, stuff like that because it really helps us uh financially here on the channel uh what do we got i'm just gonna look through all of these maybe you want to talk about what uh, we have available like our store and all those things while we answer one or two more questions yeah so there's uh our store um What's the address again? Oh, Sorry. you got uh, store.thefluechannel.com. Store.thefluechannel.com. Thank you. We have mugs <laughs> and we have a poster with all the fingerings and the the mm -hmm. flute fingerings, the uh, trill fingerings and the scales. And then you have uh, different things, shirts, mugs, all those things. You can take lessons with me on, um, on Skype uh, or on any other way to do it uh, on the internet. And it's, you can email us at info at the flute channel dot com and we will send you all the information for that. You can mm -hmm. take just one lesson. You can take a bundle of a couple of lessons. Um, then what else we have? Um, yeah, you can use our code TFC if you're looking for a flute with the Flute Center of New York. You can go on their website, flutesforsale.com. So it's flute number four sale dot com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can go on our Patreon and help us out, tip us or... Uh, give us something every month. I think it's one or two dollars. Two dollars, I think, is the minimum. Month. I think, yeah, and that $2 really $2 goes a long way too. And thanks to all our patrons yeah. that help us out for uh, you know creating content for you guys. And uh, right, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. So we'll answer one more question. But if we've missed your question, which usually does happen because this chat goes pretty fast, pretty quick, uh, please, I encourage you guys to leave the question in the comments. Um, down below in the on the youtube video and then we'll try to uh, either answer it again answer it uh, in the next podcast or answer it in the comments so we really encourage you guys to leave those questions in the comments down below be sure to like the video and stuff and um, if you haven't subscribed yet or if you're only listening on uh, on itunes and on your podcast apps please leave a review over at apple podcast that really helps us out also recommend this podcast to a friend. Uh, that would be a great little goal. We try to encourage everybody every month to at least encourage one person every month uh, from our fans to have a new podcast person uh, and podcast listeners in our fan base there. But leaving a review in your in your on Apple Podcasts really does help us a lot. And you know we answer your questions and you get to uh, chat with other flutists. Yeah, other it's amazing. So many amazing. Our fans are great. You guys are great. You guys are answering questions for people. We really appreciate that because it just kind of makes things easier for us too um oh okay so yeah this was the one i wanted to know leanne wants to know uh how do you relax your throat when i play a high e i seem to crack notes especially at the end of the note okay oh yeah yeah maybe your throat is too closed yeah so you have to open it maybe think of um yawning <gasps> yeah keep it open like that but if you don't send like enough Darth Vader. air <laughs> or if you send too much air yeah. sometimes it can back uh, you know yep. i knew a girl who was blowing so hard in the high register that her throat would go like bleh, bleh, every time because it was like too much air and then the i don't know how to explain it but the throat was kind of clapping <laughs> you know going was mm -hmm. just too much so maybe you're 
think of support like supporting the air with pressure with your abdominals but not necessarily sending a large quantity of air so when you play high think of the think of um, the air speed and send fast air so what you can do is just blow um, blow cold air in your in your on your hand like and that's faster so it's pretty much that maybe don't focus on the throat focus on the airspeed and on you know that might take care of it because if you focus too much on the throat it might make it even worse in a way because yeah. you're oh my throat oh my throat and then exactly it makes you um, be less natural with it so when you breathe in try to open the throat and yawn and then support the air and it's not just about the amount of air maybe you're blowing too much or not enough but in order to take care of that, it's really about support and airspeed, I think. But yeah. I haven't seen you or heard you, but that's what I can theorize from exactly, what I hear. Exactly. So, yeah, hopefully, guys, uh, that was helpful. You guys were so great today. Thanks so much for participating in uh, the podcast uh, this uh, month. We do this every, every well, the last Sunday of every month, usually. And uh, if you want to go and help us out over on Apple Podcasts and leave us a review, that'd be great. Give us five stars. Uh, leave a comment, too. We might even read them on the... Uh, podcast as well and if you have a, a uh, what was it if you have any um if you have a you know uh, a question about like a, a question that you want us to hear or anything like that or you want to leave a voice message i mean you can go to anchor.fm slash flute and you can go and uh leave us a voice message you can even play on the voice message you can give us a question and we'll play it on the show and we've done that once or twice already in the previous podcast and it's been pretty cool so you can go and do that and uh, you can record it on the anchor app like an anchor like for boat like as a as you would uh throw overboard and you can uh download that app on apple or on android and leave us a uh, voicemail you can subscribe to us there or subscribe to us to any uh podcast program any podcast app that you use and also subscribe to us here on youtube if you're listening to or watching to us on youtube uh give us a subscribe and uh, like our video too so we'll see you guys next time and we're gonna have new videos uh, coming out this week see yeah. you guys thanks